you explain to me um, how you would talk to a patient the night before surgery so that they can feel a little bit better about understanding why the breasts need to be removed? Well, what I tell patients is number one, you have to be at peace with the decision that you've made. Just because you've made a decision to remove the breast does not mean you have to remove the breast. Now, lots, lots of things go into that decision-making process. The type of cancer you have, how uh, advanced it is, the size of the cancer, uh, whether or not you have a gene mutation, personal preference. So what I tell ladies is that if oncologically it's safe to conserve your breast, meaning don't remove the whole breast, that is what I would suggest for you. But some ladies do not want to keep a breast that have breast cancer, regardless of how small the cancer is. So it's not exactly true that if you don't remove the breast, your cancer will come right back. That's not true for certain patients. So when you sit down with your doctor, you need to make sure you have a clear understanding of the type of cancer you have and is it safe to keep your breast. That being said, even if it is safe to keep your breast or do breast conservation therapy, you can still make the decision to remove your breast if that is what's going to give you peace of mind. So sometimes before the surgery, patients will have made the decision to remove their breast, but then they call me the night before or a couple of days before trying to make sure they, they're making the right decision. What I tell patients is if you are at peace with your decision, then you've made the right decision. But it's also validate, sometimes they want the doctor to validate um, the fact that they're grieving the loss of their breast. That's completely normal. Your breasts are a part of you. It is a part of our femininity, our sexuality. Um, even though the breasts are making you sick, if you decide to remove them, it is quite normal to feel a grief process of losing your breast. People deal with it different ways. I've had one patient who went around the day of surgery showing everybody her breast and telling, telling people to say goodbye to them. I've had other patients take pictures of their breast. I've had other patients blog about the experience. What I tell patients is that once we remove the breast, we can make you new breasts if they want to be reconstructed, but it's not the way God made you. They won't feel the same. They won't look the same. Sometimes you have numbness. It is not the same. So you have to make a really informed decision on whether or not you want to remove the breast and whether or not you want to be reconstructed. What I tell patients is once you're at peace with that decision, don't let people talk you out of things. Don't get several opinions because it will confuse you. And the night before surgery, you really should go into surgery at peace. If patients come in on the day of surgery, for me, this is my, my own philosophy. If patients come in on the day of surgery and they change the surgical plan and say, oh, by the way, I think I want to keep my breast. Or they go, oh, I, instead of keeping my breast, I want to remove my breast. I cancel the entire surgery because that means you were not at peace with your original decision. You come back into my office and we have a discussion. Some patients will go with the original plan and some patients want to go with the new plan. But when the surgical plan changes, I feel it's not safe to proceed on with surgery. I usually will counsel them and I will we'll start again or start afresh another day. If you're a small breasted woman and you really want to conserve your breast, that is the discussion you need to have with your breast surgeon. Whether or not your tumor size is of a large size where you'd be disfigured or maybe they believe in cancer behind. Just because you're small breasted does not mean you can't conserve your breast, but then it's a tumor breast ratio we look at. So if you're if you have an A cup and your breast is and your breast cancer is maybe a three centimeter, five centimeter tumor, of course we can't conserve the breast. You can talk to your doctor about certain medications you can take before having surgery. Let's say you have a triple negative or a HER2 positive cancer, and it's a large cancer, and you really want to take chemotherapy before the surgery to shrink it down so that you can keep your breast. That is an option, but you need to know all those options before you have surgery. Not everyone who has small breasts have to necessarily remove the breast if they have a tumor. And let's talk about screening and what to expect. So I get a lot of questions about why I need a drain after I've had a mastectomy. It is not true that you have to have a drain after having a lumpectomy. In fact, very few surgeons put them in routinely. We do it in case we have to remove a lot of tissue, but now that we do oncologic surgery, that means um, oncoplastic surgery, that means we actually take tissue after we remove the, the cancer out and we rotate it in to decrease the risk of a seroma. Seroma is a fluid collection that builds in the breast after removing the tissue. And that's because the lymphatics, the same ones that travel through the breast, the ones that travel to the lymph nodes, they get cut in the breast and so they leak lymphatic fluid. 
So when we do a mastectomy, because we're removing the whole breast, those lymphatics that have been damaged or cut from the surgery are gonna leak into the chest wall. If you have a reconstructed breast, you don't want fluid building up around the breast because that can be a, um, a portal for infection. Also, if you've had a, a uh, flat chest and you wanna be reconstructed, you can get a seroma that has to be drained multiple times coming back and forth after surgery. And who wants to do that? So we will leave a, a drain in place or two drains in place on each side where we did the surgery to keep that fluid from building up in the chest wall because you really want the chest wall to be flat. If you have to get radiation after surgery and you have a seroma, that can delay your treatment. So no one wants you to have a seroma or fluid collection in the chest wall. So it's important to have those drains in place in certain patients. Another thing is the drains actually are uncomfortable. And I will admit that me being a kidney cancer survivor, I've had two drains around my kidney. And when they told me that they were removing it, I knew it was gonna be uncomfortable and it was. The drains move around, um, they get pulled, they do ache. I don't ever tell my patients they're not gonna hurt. I usually tell my patients, take a deep breath. Really the breath, taking a deep breath doesn't help. It just gets their mind out the fact I'm gonna take the drain out. But yes, the drains are annoying, but they are a necessary evil to make sure that fluid does not build up in your system. The typical time a drain will stay in place after surgery is sometimes seven days to 14 days. If you're being reconstructed, sometimes the plastic surgeon will keep the drains a lot longer than that. But patients who have had a mastectomy without reconstruction will typically keep the drains for seven, to two, seven days to 14 days. So I was asked how a person can be empowered to know if whether or not they need chemotherapy. First of all, I'm a breast surgical oncologist and I tell people I stay in my lane. I don't do chemotherapy, I do surgery. That being said, before a patient goes to surgery, I like them to have all the information up front. And what I mean by that is multidisciplinary care. Most often the breast surgeon is the captain of the ship. So patients will come in with a lump in the breast and I biopsy them, or they come in after they've had a biopsy in radiology and they come to see me and they have a diagnosis of cancer. Depending upon what it is, they may need to have chemotherapy even before the surgery. So whether the patient needs to have chemotherapy before surgery or after surgery, I will usually let them see the, the oncologist before we even go to surgery. Therefore, or don't say therefore, but the reason being is that patients sometimes need that, needs that, they need that information to understand why they may or may not need chemotherapy. So it's not a surprise after the surgery. Also, sometimes people need radiation therapy, whether you conserve the breast, sometimes you need it after you remove the breast. And there's a misconception, if I take my breast off, I won't need radiation. But if you know all that information up front, you can make an informed decision about the type of surgery you want. There are certain tests or genomic tests that determine whether or not you need chemotherapy after surgery. I don't order that as the breast surgeon. There are some breast surgeons that, that do order it, but I let my oncologist make that decision. I don't usually do that. But the patient needs to know that before they have to go to surgery. So I do multidisciplinary care and most breast surgeons that I know do that as well. Instead of just taking you to surgery first, we let you see all the specialists up front to come up with a surgical plan that is individualized for you. Some patients may even need genetic testing before we go to surgery. So you may see a genetic counselor as well. Some patients want to see nutritionists. Some people need to see the lymphedema specialist before we even take you to surgery. So we try to get everybody on the at the table up front before you have surgery so that your treatment plan is individualized to you so that when you go to surgery, you know exactly what to expect after the surgery and you can be an informed patient. I always say that the best patient is an informed patient and it's an empowered patient. Those make the best patients to take care of because they are an active participant in their care. I really don't like talking to patients who are now five and 10 years out. And I say, what type of cancer did you have? Breast cancer. Well, what type? Was it hormone positive, hormone negative? I don't know. Did you take chemotherapy? Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of cancer I have or had. That is not appropriate. You should not go through your cancer treatment without knowing exactly what kind of cancer that you had. That we as physicians didn't do a great job in educating you. That is why I like Learn, Look, Locate, because not only does it talk about breast cancer after you've been diagnosed, it talks about the pre-surgical, what to expect, genetic testing, prevention. So it talks about radiation therapy. It goes through all the aspects of pre-cancer, 
after you have cancer, why you're going through cancer, and it even talks about if you have genetic mutations that put you at risk for breast cancer. So I would tell anybody before you have surgery for breast cancer or have treatment, go to reputable websites like Learn, Look, Locate to make sure you have a great understanding. And when you can go in to your physician's office and actually bring some of the questions, let's say you didn't know that you needed a drain after a mastectomy, well, you can go in and ask your doctor, am I going to get a drain after a mastectomy? Let's say you have had hormone positive breast cancer and you're not sure whether or not you're going to get chemotherapy. You can ask your doctor, hey, I looked on the website, Learn, Look, Locate, and they talked about something called the Oncotype, or they talked about the Mammoprint. Are you going to order that on me? Or if you look at radiation therapy and you go, well, what type of radiation therapy will I need? Will it be one day radiation? Will it be six weeks? I also read they have four weeks and three weeks and two weeks. What would be my radiation course? So there, everything that we do to you as physicians, there are options and we give recommendations but at the end of the day, you have to decide what you want to do and you have to feel comfortable with your treatment plan. No one's going to force you to do treatment, but we also wouldn't want you to do standard of care. But at the end of the day, an informed patient makes the most empowered patient and you have to advocate for yourself. So as the breast surgeon, most often I'm the first point of contact after a woman's been diagnosed with breast cancer. They have their pathology report. They may have been called on the phone that they've had breast cancer, so they don't know what to expect. So when I walk into that room, they are a bundle of nerves because as expected, they've never gone through any type of cancer before. Once you hear the word cancer, you don't hear anything else. When I walk in, before we even start going over the pathology report and what the treatment plan will be, I usually will take their hand. I tell them to take a deep breath. I have them take another deep breath and I have them take a third deep breath. At the end of the day, you're going to do fine. We have good treatments. You have great doctors. Know you're in good hands. Yes, this is a trying time and anxiety is a part of this. But right now, I need you to concentrate on what I'm saying. And I want you to know it will be okay. This is not a surgical emergency. This breast cancer has probably been there two to five years. So just because you found out about the breast cancer does not mean it's rapidly growing. So now we have some time to make good decisions and work you up, have the best information so you can make an informed decision on how to treat. What I tell patients is in the year 2022, we have 3.8 million survivors of breast cancer. But odds are you're gonna do fine. There's better detection methods, we have better medications. We are able to deliver precise individualized care. I always tell my patients, it's not your grandma's the way they were treated. Breast cancer is, uh, breast cancer therapy and treatments are like rapidly improving. Mm. So just because you've been diagnosed with breast cancer does not make it a death sentence. Expect to be a survivor. We can give you all the best treatment. You can have all the best doctors. But if you don't think you're going to survive, you won't. You have to be confident that your treatment is going to work for you.